This is iFiber One News. Here are today's top stories. A Wenatchee newspaper publisher's Sunday column taking the side of beleaguered U.S. Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh yielded blowback Monday morning. Five pallets of school supplies were loaded up Friday afternoon at the Moses Lake Walmart to go to students and teachers in the Moses Lake School District. Moses Lake Chiefs football went off against the Davis Pirates, scoring on offense, defense, and special teams. The Warden Cougars football team had its conference open there last night against the visiting Riverview Panthers. From the iFiber One newsroom, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. A Wenatchee newspaper publisher's Sunday column taking the side of beleaguered U.S. Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh yielded blowback Monday morning as about 100 Wenatchee Valley residents picketed the paper's office to chastise him and even demand his resignation. The column by Wenatchee World publisher Jeff Ackerman cast doubt on accusations brought by Christine Blasey Ford, who says she was sexually assaulted by Kavanaugh when she was 15 and he was 17. The column also likened the allegations to making fun of a childhood classmate going to the grocery store without a list and allowing a dog to leave waste in a neighbor's yard. A national walkout in support of sexual assault victims was already scheduled for 10 a.m. local time, and Wenatchee residents held their event at the Wenatchee World's downtown office. I, I really feel like Mr. Ackerman um, trivialized sexual assault and women, and I'm here protesting the, our, the editorial, which I thought was very demeaning to women. He doesn't listen to us, and it has no place in a community like this. It's editorial, and I'm very angry, and I would like to see him reprimanded or even lose his job. This is a painting that represents shame, despair, loneliness. I was sexually assaulted by a neighbor, and I didn't tell my mom until a few years back. It took me like 40 years, 50 years to have enough courage to talk about it. So I, when people take it so lightly and they write stuff about like this man Eckerman, I think it's very, very shameful and very bad to do that to women. I'm appalled. I'm appalled at his um, lack of understanding and also his um, arrogance, his flipness about something this serious, no matter who's right or wrong. The subject matter is very, very serious. Gail McDonough says the large local outpouring Monday shows the movement for survivors of sexual abuse is gaining traction. I think that the important change, the deep changes that we need to make are only made at a time of crisis and things get worse before they get better. So this gathering here and the speed with which it came together is an indication that it is bearing fruit. Ackerman took over management of the Wenatchee World in March after its purchase by WIC Communications of Arizona. He was not at the office during the picket, his staff said, and he did not respond to a message from iFiber One News seeking comment. The day his column appeared, a second woman publicly accused Brett Kavanaugh of exposing himself to her during a dorm party at Yale University in the 1983-84 school year. Jefferson Robbins, iFiber One News. This segment is brought to you by... Change doesn't have to be complicated with a low-profile microwave hood combination that's ready to install right out of the box. It fits in the same space as your under-cabinet hood, so you can get your microwave off the countertop and make space for the routines worth keeping. The low-profile microwave hood combination from the number one selling appliance brand in the USA. Whirlpool Appliances, now available at More Furniture in Afreda. Five pallets of school supplies were loaded up Friday afternoon at the Moses Lake Walmart to go to students and teachers in the Moses Lake School District. Walmart and its employees again stepped up this year, donating about $7,500 worth of school supplies to the district. These supplies are then taken to the school district warehouse and then distributed to the schools. Walmart store manager Galen Mathis said the store has made the donation to the schools for several years with more than $16,000 worth of school supplies in just the past two years. School district officials said the supplies will be distributed evenly to the schools throughout the district. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. This segment is brought to you by... Your taste buds bored? Well then bring them to Jay's Teriyaki. Not only does Jay's have a variety of teriyaki dishes, they also offer mouth-watering salads and sides. 
Call Jay's 509-764-5155. Jay's Teriyaki, located at 123 East Broadway in Moses Lake, because it's all in the sauce. Moses Lake Chiefs football went off against the Davis Pirates, scoring on offense, defense, and special teams to blow out their conference foes 63-23. The 63 points scored by the Chiefs are the most the team has scored so far this decade. Moses Lake charged ahead, taking a 28-0 lead by the end of the first quarter and a 42-15 lead going into halftime. After struggling to score through non-league play, the Chiefs steamrolled through Davis with the team only punting once late in the game during garbage time. After the game, head coach Todd Griffith was pleased but doesn't want his team to lose focus because of the big win. You know, they're, they're a young team and they, they uh, kind of play to their potential a little bit tonight. I think we got a long ways to go still, but they, they played really well tonight. I, I, I don't think it's going to affect us any. I think we're just going to come back out on Monday and get back to work and, and get after it. That's my hope. Moses Lake's next game will be against their rivals, Wenatchee, in the Apple Bowl. I'm Adam Chikoski, Drive Fiber One Sports. And that's another Cougar first the Warden Cougars football team had its conference open there last night against the visiting Riverview Panthers, and Warden dominated, winning 41-8. The Cougars jumped ahead early, taking a two-touchdown lead by the end of the first quarter. The Panthers made a few drives deep in the Warden territory, but a couple of forced turnovers kept the Cougars on top. Warden entered halftime up 22-0 and went on to continue to cruise in the second half. The Cougars led up a touchdown in the second half, but still outscored the Panthers 19-8, and Warden finished with a big win. The Cougars advanced to 3-1 on the season with a 1-0 conference record. Next game for Warden will be at Royal. I'm Adam Chikoski for iFiber One Sports. This is iFiber One News. For more information on these stories and other news, visit us online at iFiberOne.com or check us out on Facebook.